What the fuck is up, everybody? Welcome to The Fuckery with Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. I'm Lenny Marcus. And I'm Leslie Jones. And this is the podcast where the mission is to keep it 100 at all times. We talk about the fuckery going on in the world and in our lives, all while having a whole lot of fun doing it in the studio today. I'm so excited. The champ is here. That's right. The one and only Iron Mike Tyson is on the show. And of course... The fuckery of the week. But first, Leslie, what the fuck is up? We will be what in the fuck is that? We will be in Richmond, Virginia, Atlantic City, Royal Oak, Michigan, Cleveland, Ohio. We are coming in March. Get your tickets now. I'm excited about that. I'm like me and you on the road is gonna be so f- oh my God. Like Lenny, Lenny, just, Lenny, I don't tell you how much I know I'm always on your ass, but I don't tell you how much joy you bring to my life. It's like, Wait, like you're when, supposed to say this for the, the Valentine's road, Day show. No, but oh <laughs> fuck off. I don't love you like that. But listen, but when we go when we go on the road and stuff, we always like do stuff now. Like, yeah. you know, like like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't sit in a hotel room. You'd be like, come out. Let's go see the, the burger place. Or that's, it's really yeah, fun. Yeah, we got to find it's something like, in Richmond, Virginia. And God knows what we're going to do in Atlantic City. That's a swing Oh, town. my God. It, well, I'm scared <laughs> to, to catch everything there. Atlantic like, I feel City. Like and Atlantic, I feel like Atlantic City might be dirtier than Vegas. Like, you know what I'm saying? It it's is. It's just like way more low down. Like, I mean, monkeypox is definitely there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff is definitely there. Who knows? But I'm looking forward to some of these places. I got friends in Michigan. Yes, lots of white people. And Cleveland, you said oh, yesterday. Oh, you got friends? I do have you friends in friends? Michigan. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is so fucking cool. Okay, we okay. We should have lunch with have them. We're going to have so much fun. And then. We're gonna have fun. I, I don't want to have lunch with white people in, <laughs> in Michigan. And then Cleveland. Wait, is it Grand Rapids? Uh, is no, it but Grand it's Rapids? close to Grand Rapids. And you said Grand Rapids and Cleveland, Ohio. Why are those towns good? <laughs> Go ahead. Because they ha- listen. There's there's <laughs> there's dick towns, and people don't know about these towns. There's dick towns. You oh, know what I'm saying? And Cleveland, Cleveland is one of them. You know on. what I'm saying? Now, oh, what no, like made Omaha? This the- come on, Oma, like Omaha, like Omaha. Me and dicks is like they steaks, thick. You know what I'm saying? Ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Ready to throw right on the grill. I don't you know understand. What, I'm what is this? Just your assessment, or you? Listen, I have talk. traveled. I have lived. And I have traveled, yeah. and I have fucked, and I have <laughs> fucked in different towns, and I have graded the dick in different towns. And I'm telling you, every time, like Austin, Austin, Texas, I love you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you going, could be going there you. too to Moon Tower. Are we going there? Yeah, uh, baby, Moon Tower. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Well, I can never believe. I would never believe Cleveland, Ohio, is that kind of town. But I guess man, gra- oh, Grand Rapids, uh, Grand Rapids, see. Michigan. Oh, seriously, Grand Rapids. What was the other one I said yesterday that you was like you a really bunch surprised of about? Yeah, that oh, one. Man. I mean, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's very obscure mm-hmm. little town. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll have Chicago. Chicago. Chicago got- that's where it started. What? Chicago. Yeah. Woo, cross Chicago Roy, got cross them up, yeah. cross them up. Woo. <laughs> so is this how we're picking where we're going? No, I, I mean not. <laughs> I'm I'm just interested in seeing what kind. You know, not you know, not not really, but you know, almost. All right, all right, yeah, you, men, right. we're coming to your town. Leslie is ready to go. She has your I'm reputation. Ready to put you on the chart. All right, well, let's exactly. do it. Let's do it. I'm very excited. We'll be right back with Mike Tyson, the champ, right after this. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Now it's time for Who the Fuck Is This? Who the fuck is this? Where we welcome it's an interview Lenny, special. Lenny, Lenny, <laughs> Lenny, Lenny, you know it's good. <laughs> we welcome an interview special guest on the show. In the studio today, we have one of the greatest heavyweight boxes of all time, if not the greatest, arguably one of the greatest athletes of our generation. He won his First 19 professional fights by knockout, earning him the nicknames of Kid Dynamite on Sports Illustrated, Iron Mike, and later the baddest man on the planet. As far as I'm concerned, he still is the baddest man on the planet. He holds the record as the youngest boxer ever to win the heavyweight title. Now a cultural figure in his own right, he's made multiple movie and TV appearances, including The Hangover, The Hangover 2, Rocky Balboa, and so many more. As a mogul and cannabis advocate, his cannabis brand... Tyson 2.0 has reached 24 states since 2021. Also, check out his hit podcast, Hot Boxing, where Mike has in-depth conversations with fascinating minds, celebrities, and athletes in a studio full of smoke. 
Leslie Jones was there not too long ago. Please welcome the heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. Woo! <laughs> too much, Chan. Thank you, Lenny. Yeah, Lenny, that was overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's too much excitement for me, man. <laughs> Shit, Lenny. Oh, man. Where are you from, Lenny? I'm from, originally from Long Island, and now most oh, of my man. life I've been in Manhattan. Um, but oh, man, you and I man. have crossed paths multiple times. In New York? I've in New York, in so Albany. Long. In Albany. Oh, that's, I'm, we're from up there. You're from up what there. What are you doing up there? I went to SUNY Albany, and I've... Oh, yeah. And as I told the story a few times to many people, there was always, when you were coming up, when you were 19, I was 19, uh, 20 maybe, I'm a hair older than you. And around campus, there was always a quote unquote Mike Tyson sighting because everybody up there knew who you were. Your fights were on UHF and everybody's like, where, where did you see Mike Tyson? I'll tell you a story about Sony. Go ahead. Okay. So he was like, who, where'd you see him? And I was always in the quad and like, where's he going? People were kind of trying to follow you, but didn't want to get too close. So where were you going, Mike? The rumor was co-eds. Yes, this is true. <laughs> this is, and I'm going to tell you what you little dirty mothers of Sony. These are dirty motherfuckers. These white boys are dirty motherfuckers. So listen, I'm in the girl's room. I'm in the room, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm in her dorm. People knocking on the window, answering the door, when I get an autograph. No, yep. they did. They pulled the fucking fire alarm. <gasps> so you had to run out <laughs> of the dorm? <laughs> <laughs> the police came in. At the, everybody had to leave the building. No. And stuff, but hey, Mike, hug me. No fire. <laughs> oh, fucking bastard. Yeah, dirty ass motherfucker. Uh, this, Son of a bitch. Leslie, this is right before he's a champ. So everybody up there knows. Black people of, wouldn't do no shit. Like, they yeah, wouldn't no. think no fire. Kick the door down. But they like, <laughs> if you was trying to Why do we pull the fire off? <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> You don't understand, Leslie, everybody knows who uh, he is. He fights on what now is what UHF. Remember UHF? You had to have like a special yeah, yep. TV and you had yep. to turn that one special dial that doesn't, the, these yep. kids don't even yep. know what I'm talking about. That, and, oh my God, I remember that because I yeah. just used to be like, what is this for? I yeah. never understood what it was, UHF was It was for. just some weird, and he would, they would have like this local, this terrible <laughs> camera on these fights and everybody would go running back from the dorms because Tyson's fighting tonight, Tyson's fighting. We all go running back in, we get the channel on, and before you could even sit down, Mike would knock the guy out. And then everybody go run it back to the library. It was crazy. Like, if, oh if you were late for the beginning of that fight, you missed it. It was it was classic. Listen, I don't even, at this moment, I don't even know who that guy is. <laughs> oh. Ain't that some shit? Isn't that something? That that is... That's what I was thinking about when I was watching the rap doing the Grammys thing. I was like... <laughs> You remember when all this shit was just like bad? Like yeah. everybody thought this shit was bad, and now it's like I can remember a uh, cultural thing. In the early '80s, people said, "Mike, you was at a hip hop bebop." It was just even black people. They were like, "Oh man, that's it's nothing." But, but they were right. There was nothing but criminals. And, 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 <laughs> and criminals. Yeah. You think about it, it was a Criminal, hardcore time. Yeah, and they did their own music. People came there to rob yeah. people. It was like criminal. It was really. And <laughs> the environment was criminally, criminally insane. Yeah. I was just, I was just. Like, like this, like, and that's so funny. Like, cause I was just telling him, um, telling Lenny about mm. how when we would watch Tyson fights. You remember I told you about my sister in law, who lost her shit when I told her that I fucking did the shows with you. But she fucking loved you, and we would always get the fights. Mm. And there was this one fight we had got ready for, and she's in the kitchen, and you knocked this motherfucker <laughs> out, and she ran. She was like, no. <laughs> This motherfucker that knocked him out. What the? F it was so crazy. Everyone tells me that same thing. It's so. All day. But that's. But but you know, I was just talking to. Um, okay, it's Keenan's partner, and I should have got this boy's name because he was actually really cool. Mm -hmm. He says he's your partner with the uh, uh, no. hot boxing. I cannot think of this dude's name. Keenan. Yes, he was so fucking nice. But he was telling me how, and, and I was like, that is so true. Like you were. Uh, the epitome of a royal gladiator. Like, you was a gladiator. Like, it was just like, fuck yeah, this is what boxing's supposed to look like. You know what I mean? Well, you know Absolutely. what? There was there was no frills. He walks in, black shorts, no socks, black shoes. Yeah! No just no robe even. Just Maybe boom. a little hip-hop. He had some hip-hop. Yeah. He would come in on that hip-hop. Nobody these, ooh, played hip-hop back then. All these Nobody guys. Television was it was by hip -hop so good, then. man. It was so good. We used to be like, oh, he's like motherfucking like. You remember on Star Wars when the the, the dudes, the villains always just look dope as fuck. <laughs> just like, oh, Mike looks like he's just. And we all, oh, man, as black people, we were like, 
Yes, he has beaten the shit out of everybody. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it was like, yes, get this motherfucker. Like, it was like, you was our gladiator. Like, you were our gladiator. I, I was, I told you this when we was talking. I was just, I love, I, I will always have like big love in my heart for you. I, I, especially like when I was on the comedy show and you would come through the comedy shows. Man, but one keep- of the best. I told you the story about it. I, I did it on your show, but. Yeah, one of the best, just just the best. And then to meet you and find out you're just a fucking big heart. You're just uh, a I've been walking heart. Words. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're just a big heart. <laughs> well, I mean, if, Lenny, ev- but I'm gonna let Lenny because Lenny got yeah, so many on, questions. Lenny. Well, everybody, got, got, I mean, everybody felt that way up there. We felt like if you went to SUNY Albany back then, you, he was our guy. You know what I mean? If you're a sports guy, he was our guy. And to me, after. You were in heavyweight champ of the world. I've lost track of boxing. I don't know what happened. So to me, you're the last champ of the world as far as I'm concerned. Thank you I don't you know what happened that. after that. Thank you. What happened to the sport after that? I don't know. But here's how we met. I got to get this story out. We met Let's August of 1986. Okay, um, it had, on Central Avenue in Albany at Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken. There was a Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Ironically, what were you doing what in there? What was I doing in there? Good question. <laughs> so I worked with the football team and up in Albany with all the coaches and stuff like that. I was assistant up there to, to to help them out and stuff. I think they called it manager at the time. But anyway, I was down there early working with them in in preseason. And another guy came up. We lived off campus, so we we're setting up this house. And every night we would go, "What do you want?" to do for dinner and we couldn't decide burger king no we went back and forth for an hour and finally we went what about kentucky fried chicken so we decided on central afternoon some broke ass that's right (laughs) we go to kentucky fried chicken we don't even notice the bentley somehow is it parked in front of kentucky fried chicken (laughs) we walk in we're online and there's this huge line at kentucky fried chicken for they're out of chicken for some reason and everybody's waiting for the chicken so we're waiting online now cut to David Letterman would do this thing every night where he would put a camera on on Broadway and yell at people who kind of look like other people like, oh, look, um, Cicely Tyson or whatever. He would yell at whoever it was, the first lady of American theater, whoever that he would yell at. And he would just and it wasn't the, that person. They would turn around and everybody would laugh. Well, I'm online with my friend Peter and you come out of the bathroom, go, excuse me, walk in between us. And I go, oh, my God. That's Mike Tyson. And my friend goes, that's a good one. He thinks I'm doing the David Letterman thing. And I grab him by the shirt and I go, no, that's fucking Mike Tyson. I got to get an autograph. And so now cut to, it's a scene out of my house because I take a Kentucky Fried Chicken, did you like the food card? And we go to this car and get a pen. And now I have to walk in in front of everybody at 19. I think you're 19, I'm 19. And walk up to you and ask for an autograph. And I mean, it's like, the I am... 135 pounds soaking wet white guy in front of your entire black entourage and you're just sitting at one of the tables waiting for the chicken and I walk up and I go excuse me are you Mike Tyson and you are very sweet you looked up at me and said look like the motherfucker don't I (laughs) (laughs) and now I'm full sweating I'm full sweating so I go yes yes you do and I go can I have an autograph and you go two bucks and I am reaching. I go, <laughs> sure. And I start reaching into my pocket for the two bucks. And you go, ah, I'm only fucking with you, man. And you sign my card. And I very slowly backed out of that group while everybody laughed at me and got back in the car and got the hell out of there. <laughs> so thank you, Jam, from 1986. That was the first time we met. Oh, my God. Oh my God! But wait a minute. What is this this thing? This poster? Or oh, the about? second what time is- we meet. So now I'm telling that story. That I'm on Jim Norton's show here at Sirius. Uh, Opie and Anthony at the That's time. My man, Jim. Yeah, and the, I'm there the day before you come in. And I they said Tyson's coming in tomorrow. And I said, Oh man, can I come back in? I have this poster of Mike Tyson um, from from eighty from like eighty eight. Can I get it autographed? He's like, yeah, come back in. And I told that story on there. You, you got to tell Mike that story. And Judith is going to show you this pic. Do you remember this poster that was out in 1980? Yes, I do. Now, yes, that was in my, I took that back from college. And that was in my parents' attic for like 40 years, 30 years. And then when my parents passed away, this was in the attic covered with dirt. I'm like, I am cleaning this up. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And I had it on my wall for all these years. And then when you were on about, I don't know, that must have been about five, six, seven years ago. And then I came in. I, you, they let me come back the next day. 
I took it out of the frame. You autographed this for me. So thank you again. Oh, for oh, my it's my pleasure. Man. So this is the third oh, time. See, that's so for me. Cool. But yeah, that's that. I love this. I mean, this. You're. I've followed your career since the beginning. I mean, obviously, you know, from you were 18 years old to you know. Yes, that's when I started. Yep. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. I told you that. I was like, yeah, yeah. I told you, Lenny. I said, you wait till Lenny meets you. He's gonna <laughs> Lenny Marcus. Lenny Marcus. That's Marcus. right. You called me on the last show. You called me the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> yes, you know who that was, right? Yeah, he's a killer. Uh, <laughs> no, not just a killer. <laughs> perversion. Yeah, perverted the killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit! And here's how we okay, come well, together. Well, I start. You yeah, know, I started comedy with Zach Galifianakis, and you got to punch him in the face, yeah. and all our friends were yeah, so excited. That's my buddy, Zach. <laughs> Zach is an awesome guy. In the Hangover, that was awesome as well. Did you, was that like a comeback for you? Did you think the Hangover, like you, you know? When you show up in that movie, people are like, holy shit, it's Mike Tyson. I, I have to tell you this story. <clears throat> I'm in Las Vegas. And there's a bodyguard there. No one's in there. This is a really, it's just no one's in there. It's just one group of people in there. But this guy, bodyguard, he, we've done cocaine together. I always look out for him. So I said, I want to go in there and hang out by myself. I ain't saw these people. So I'm not paying attention. I'm doing my drugs. And the next thing you know... Zach comes down and said, oh, that's you. I guess they must say kick him out or something, right? Then he comes, hey, that's you. We got a, we're doing a movie together. And I'm high. I said, we are? <laughs> I said, we are? He said, yeah, next week. And so my agent had got me the movie. And listen, I was just so blasted at the hangover and stuff. And um, I did, I did, I was high in the, in the truck. I was just a mess. I was a mess back then, right? Um. For the, in the hangover, so I, really? Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm in the hangover, and it goes great. But I'm not I'm, I'm not thinking this is going to be a great movie. I, I think, <laughs> really? I just thought the movie, I got some money for it. This one. <laughs> and next thing you know, I come out of a, a restaurant, and you know those people, like, sightseers? Mm -hmm. They saw me, and they went crazy. <laughs> they started hugging me because they saw the, pre, um, the preview yeah. of the movie theater when I mm -hmm. kicked back, I guess. And they said, you're so awesome. And my friend, this is after I was all kind of washed up. Under, my friend said, Mike, we're back. We're back, Mike. <laughs> oh, wow. And then um, everything started rolling from there. Yeah, oh, that's man. awesome. You, you, I told you the one-man the one man show was The one-man show. Thank you. Oh, my God. It's fucking brilliant. I had brilliant. Yep. I here's my favorite part of the one man show. You're gonna think it's insane, but when you're in prison, Florence Henderson visited you in prison. Isn't that a man? That's the crazy Florence shit. Florence Henderson. <laughs> but I was in the hole then, so I didn't want to visit because if I had to visit, I had to be all chained up. Florence Henderson. You talking about uh, yeah. uh, Brady, from the Bunch. Brady Bunch, the mother. Really? <laughs> she, was, she was watching the. Uh, the guy said, what? The guard calls him. Florence Henderson, I said, can't go see it like this. I was in the hole. If you if you're in the hole and you go to a visiting, you gotta be shackled from yeah, your feet. But to what the end. fuck did she did y'all did y'all know each other or something? No. Um Miss Henderson, she was um, I believe she was with the mayor. They were watching the um Indianapolis five hundred and I guess she asked about me. Mm. I mean I really I was really That's grateful. Really I appreciate very, that. Yeah, yeah, that was very sweet. Damn. That's a listen, wow. I, I I listen, um, I see more celebrities visiting me than I did when I was out. <laughs> really? Yeah, Whitney, all those guys came. Whit Whitney Houston came and saw you? Whitney, Bobby, yeah. No shit. Yeah, James Brown came. Um, what are um, they? What are you guys Ma talking? Maya Angelou came. Maya Angelou, Angelou came. Yeah. Um, no the, uh, shit. Uh, Malcolm X's wife came. No wow. shit. Wow. So, like, did they bring you stuff, or did they just, you know, just come to visit you? A cake with a file, yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just happy to see me. They're yeah, beautiful. that's crazy. LL Cool J, listen, I'm LL so cool proud. J. Everybody, Tupac. Oh, that's, Heavy that's fucking D. dope. Heavy D. Yeah. And I miss Heavy. Me too. Oh, man. Me too. Oh, man. Now, Heavy was a sweet dude. Now I feel bad we didn't go, Les. We should have gone. <laughs> We should have gone. <laughs> you wouldn't visit. If I'd known you could go visit, I'd come visit you. You'd be like, who are you, bitch? I'm like, ah. You know who came to visit me? Michael Jackson's moms and dad came to visit me. Wow. No shit. Yeah. Joe Jackson. Yes. I mean, what is that conversation like? Joe is an awesome guy. Really? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people have 
complications. He's just one of my favorite people and stuff. Well, you know, black fathers. I think people don't understand. I, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside there as oh. well. You know? Oh, okay. He's he's an awesome guy. Yeah. Awesome guy. Really? I mean, I, I always say people don't Listen, understand. Listen, if he didn't put his foot down, we never hear about Michael Jackson. I was just finna say, like, <laughs> don't understand. He be working that, like, in, he, have where where dream, he be working man. at and... Um, Postal office and stuff. I mean, I'm just saying you had a dream. Steel mill. You think Indiana. about no real a locked talk. up, a locked up, or somewhere. locked up because that was a, a that was a hard time. And and because like you think about Serena Williams and uh, Venus, a father like motherfuckers be like, I'm getting my kids to fuck out of here. Listen, um, when you drive to Chicago from like where Cleveland or something, and you go by um Gary and Anna, when you're on the highway, and you see it. Whoa, right. Mm. Whoa, it's really scary. Really? Oh, yeah, it's a really scary-looking place. Gary, really? Indiana, yeah. Well, Brownsville's no f- picnic, no? No, that's, yeah, that's why I know Gary's no picnic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Brownsville, Brownsville is one of them dick places that, that I was telling you about earlier. Oh, that's, wow. That's good. Okay. That's good, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, um, got to be careful down there with those people. Those people live hard. Yeah. They play yeah. for keeps down there. Mm-hmm. Well, Brian is keep. from Brownsville. Oh, wow. Her stylist. Her stylist. My stylist. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. But she's tough, too, huh? It's, I mean, like, you know, it's all tough. I'm, I'm from Linwood, Compton. All that shit's hard. Yeah. All that, And I was in the middle of crack era, yeah, like, in the they, middle of crack they, era. They don't know what black-on-black black crime is like. Man, God you just don't damn. fucking even know. Like, watching your geometry teacher fucking buy crack and shit. Like, that shit's fucking, like... <laughs> Like what, man? I'm serious. No, yeah. man. I remember. I remember my worst crack story is that I was in love with Ellis Barfield. Ellis Barfield was like supposed to be a star, one of the best basketball players I ever saw. Seeing him buying crack for my brother was heartbreaking. You know who I saw buying dope one day? I'm in Brooklyn. Nigga that played Michael in Good Times. No, what? He talk, he's talking to me for yeah, a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next day, you know, he went in this building. I'm messing your mic. That's the dope spot. He's in the dope spot right now. What? Yeah. I could tell he was. High. I could tell he was high though. Oh man! So I'm going, he's talking about thank you, Mr. Tyson, for supporting us and this and that. Oh. Good time. And he was just fucked. Up. I was always polite to him because I'm. Mean, I'm always polite when someone that their worst. You know? Yeah. yeah that black, fuck you. You just never know. Yeah. Fucking no. You never. And the next know. thing, you know, he. I heard he died now, but he yeah. went right into that dope spot. My man said that's the dope spot, Mike. Damn. Wow. Yeah, man. I'm just, that that cracker oh, was a motherfucker. Yeah, sword on his face and shit. <sighs> that crack mother, like that's what just like <sighs> motherfuckers talk about real, real fucking economy breakdown. And I'm not saying that white people don't have this either because oh. there's some bad white neighborhoods too. Oh, shit. Um, Gary, in the, up fuck in, yeah. Indiana, up there, all those poor Hell ass yeah, white people. Man, fuck oh, yeah, man. I mean it's just. I mean that's Kentucky. what that's what we need to realize is a whole yeah, societal Kentucky. thing. It's not just fucking color. Arkansas. It's God, it's fucking man. class. My know? my shit. hometown. One time a wiffle ball went into the. <laughs> <laughs> went, into, went into the sewer and had to go buy another wiffle ball. It was really, really upsetting. We don't have that pleasure. Yeah, we had to make a, a, ro- we make had to a make rock out own, of a ball. We had to make our own wiffle ball. <laughs> you know, time, to, and, you, we, and you're talking about sewer. What the fuck is a sewer? <laughs> did you ever see um, when we made those the box cut the long stick and the two wheels and we pulled it? Yeah. And we had the little box for a seat. Yeah, oh, wow. man. Poor people make their own toys. We got man, little ma- matches and do been flips. There getting engineers. We was engineers when we was little. That's fucking funny. <laughs> but Lenny, I know you got some sports I do. questions. I got a couple more questions. This, Leslie, Mike is famous for these quotes that I love. These quotes, and you, you could they could attribute it to you, Leslie, a couple of these. But Uh-oh. my favorite one, Mike. I told you this before. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, and I say that all. The time he he loves. I it all. love he that loves quote. It. Everyone has, has a plan till they get punched in the mouth. Because we walk into these absolutely. We, we walk. We see all these people who are big, big talkers, and then Leslie comes in and it world renowned. Goodbye, it's over. World renowned, and I come in and punch it right in the mouth, Listen, and they just no. don't know what the fuck. They don't have a plan B. No plan B. They don't have a plan A either. That's no. That's what they only <laughs> depend on. Their plan A. Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. goes wrong. Where where do we go from here? 
<laughs> because they don't, they don't know what going wrong yeah. is. It's like it's so fucking annoying. Because they, they believe what they thought is going to work. Exactly. Just because they thought it. They didn't, exactly. They didn't plan it out, but this is the way it was going to work. Exactly. Yeah, it's funny. I just watched like your 40 knockout. They have a thing on uh, on the YouTube, 40 of your knockouts. And I watched how you went around knocking all these guys out. And I mean, it's an array of... You know, right, right to the body, uppercut, right uppercut. But then when they, they looks like they're gonna cover it, you you knock them out with the left hook. I mean, you could go up, down, in, out. You have all these plans. You could see if they went at you with the jab, you go under it. Sometimes you went around it. It was hey, it was incredible. unfair. I had a great, I had a great teacher, but just yeah. those guys would there be there. It's not fair. I was yeah. <laughs> I was. It's almost like I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, isn't that something like to get a boxer with a conscience? Like now you got to get a conscience, and it's like shit. Now I, you really do look at your hands as weapons. Now. Hey, um, I just realized that um, when I finished when I was boxing, I had to be that guy to get what I am now. Mm -hmm. So I have to be this guy to go to the next level. <clears throat> Absolutely. You know. Oh, absolutely. Boxing was my platform. But right, but these this, guys this annoy you. My job. Would these guys annoy you with, like, they always show it in, in this video I'm watching. They always go to them before the fight, and they're like, I think I got something for him. You know what I mean? I know how to attack him. I've seen the film. It's Is it delusional, yeah. or do they have to think like that? When people are talking, when people are talking about his footage, right? Yes. When boxers are talking about, oh, I could beat Tyson. Yeah. Like, it's... I, sometimes when they're doing it, I go, God, I wish you would just come in and just knock the ass out, right? <laughs> like, because it's just like, you fucking, like like you say, everybody got a plan so and then you punch the guys, in the face. Those are the guys that talk like those are not the guys I worry about. Mm -hmm. The guys I worry about when we come to the center of the ring, they put their head down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, when I go back to the gym, I say, he's coming to fight. Really? Yeah. I could feel the energy. Got his really? Head not not looking in my face, and I could feel the fucking intensity hmm. coming off. Really? And I and I could feel it. I go back to the corner. and say, he's coming to fight. <laughs> I say he's coming to fight, nigga. I'm gonna jab and move my head. This guy's coming to fight. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so when you just recently fought Roy Wood, uh -huh. um, dude told me he was like, Roy I don't know. I didn't Roy feel Jones. Roy Jones. Roy, Roy Jones. <laughs> He'll kill Roy, Roy Wood. Wood. I'm thinking about Roy. <laughs> <laughs> kill Roy. Roy gonna <laughs> kill you. <laughs> I'll just that Roy. Name, just like, uh. Uh, uh. No, All but, these niggas I knocked out, she don't know my name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry, Roy. I'm sorry. Uh, but Roy Jones, when you were fighting him, like, I. I and this is this is my opinion. You uh -huh. can put this all on me. I think you could have whooped his ass. What sense would that have made? <laughs> True. I just um I was just very grateful that he the, would do that it. That she was me. boxing. Yeah. That she was getting the boxing. Yeah. Game. Okay. The, what about that. this, Leslie? Now I'm gonna give you a Mike Tyson quote. And if this doesn't sound like it's coming from you, I don't know what does. I love to hit me and people. Mike is from the same thing. I love to hit people. I love to. Most celebrities are afraid someone's going to attack them. I want somebody to attack me. No weapons, just me and him. I like to beat men and beat them bad. And I swear, Mike, she may not yeah, say this specifically, like but she says that. Come at me. Come at me. Because I'm just, I just love, I love Ooh. when people challenge me. I love it. I love when people be like, you can't do this. Ooh, let me but just you know, show listen, you. Listen, no who says that. The heavyweight champ of the world. I'm not him, him anymore. That's, <laughs> I'm not him anymore. They're just like, come at me, motherfucker. Like that. I'm yeah. always like, what the fuck? Let's go. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Like I fucking, I'm a samurai, motherfucker. I'm ready to take your fucking ass on. You know. I wish sometimes, you know, I'm the kind of guy I get emotional, I get energy, and I say how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no filter. I don't care what it is. It just comes out. I'm sorry. That's your sister right oops. there. I mean, that's <laughs> I said, oops. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't even know what a censor is. So trust me, you talk, you preach it to the choir. I was like, censor, that's a thing. Some, that's sometimes a I thing. say something like that, I say, you know, I'm only joking. Right? No, ooh, come, no, back, my, come back, Come back, Mike. You're going to get a lawsuit. No, time. but come I back. didn't see you in interviews where I'd be like, thank you. No, fuck that. Sometimes you need to check motherfuckers. Like, oh, when you went off on that dude, I was like, yes. Because I would have been like, no. And your mama, your mama won too, though. No, keep the camera on me while we talking about, like, like the whole thing that talk about, like, me. I talk to Chris about this all the time. Chris Rock all this is all all the time. I was like, like it's just like sometimes it's okay to just call motherfuckers out, but like 
you be so in shock in the moment of that stuff happening. But I know that I just would be like, nah, fuck that. We finna fight. Like, no, nah, uh-huh. fuck that. I'm running all over the stage. I'm jumping on Jada. I'm jumping off the stage you have on Jada's table. If you're kind, sometimes I'm kind. people think you're a bitch because, you, you know, you're respectable and kind. And then you got to... And then you got to show them you're not, and the next day you know I'm on Prozac. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh, you the, the problem. The judge put me on Prozac. Yeah, you the fucking I'm problem. Serious. You hear no, me, Lenny? Really yeah. This guy talk. disrespect me. Yeah, I, no, I deal with him. Talk. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm a hand, I got I got handcuffs. I got a judge in my life. I got a prosecutor in my life. People don't be fucking, <laughs> wor- <laughs> be, be fucking realizing that shit. Got a like judge when you run in my life. Because that's why I told you, I was like, yeah, I think I give a fuck about being famous. I will knock the shit. I will fuck. You up, stop running up on me like that. Like, listen, it's just like real listen, talk. Listen, dig, right? I felt that way before, and I'm just giving you some advice. I know, and I'm a glutton for pain, but I got tired writing those checks to these poor niggas that never yeah. seen millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. before. Yeah, you're right. They never, Absolutely they, they right. couldn't buy a loaf of bread, and they're out there suing me for millions and <laughs> yeah. hundreds of thousands. And now. Yeah, I mean, I saw that video not too long ago on a plane. The guy was provoking you, and you, you know, okay, you want some of this? And then, you know, and just, I think that should be then, legal. Then Whatever happens after that, yeah. I mean, and I, then you didn't give it to him, and it's like, what? Listen, like you were, I wasn't really hitting this guy. Of course. But, um, the, the fact, of course, because the fact, the the fact is, this guy was talking about, oh, man, I'm fuck you, baby, when I come on the phone loud in front of the first <laughs> class. Oh, baby, when I get you, baby, you're going to suck my dick. Oh, baby, my dick's getting hard right now. This white person, though, you think some nigga be talking like this. This white guy talking yeah, like Yeah, and they just got like, priv- They don't understand that privilege fucking shit. That privileged shit. You just doing it because you're just an asshole and you know ain't nobody well, gonna listen, say nothing. Yeah, because he, he he had them scared a little bit. That was upset me that he had these um flight attendants and they had them scared and they couldn't do their job. And I'm saying to myself, a little ego, I'm saying they letting this bitch ass nigga scare them. Yeah. Nigga. And I'm like saying, you should be scared of me, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, real talk. That's me. real talk though. Like fuck. You know, I felt a little bit. I felt um a little bit um humiliated. I said, "Y'all scared of him? Mm-hmm. Y'all should be scared of me." And I, he, 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 he just petrified this little guy. And so I had to ask him, "You, I, you, I need you to not say that anymore around these ladies." <laughs> yeah, I said, "You don't say it." And then he's, you know, things happen. But I, I, I advise him not to say that anymore. <laughs> I think he got see, the message. And now, now that I know it's for like for chivalry too. Now, see, now that I'm not no chivalry nigga. No, but I'm just but he saying. Was wrong. But he was wrong, and that's that's fucking like man, if, you see the shit if, that if they If I let him get away with that, I would have been wrong too. Yeah. Is there anything that See? truly pisses you off? Like, you know, something stupid. Like, they write ch- champ, but it looks like chomp on the Starbucks cup. And you're like, I'm going to kill hey, this guy. Listen, um, <laughs> hey, listen, this is what I learned. Um, I got the Goliath complex. Hmm. Um, everything I do, when I fall, you know, it vibrates to the whole galaxy. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows about it. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just the only thing. That's, that's what they, somebody, when somebody told me that, he said, you have the Goliath complex. It's true. You know, no one expects you to lose, and when you lose, the whole world hears about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Interesting. And it's it's. You remember, I used to always say that people always remember when I bomb. They never remember when I kill. They always <laughs> remember when. Well, I you bomb. do you too. Remember when you bomb too. I, I always remember when I bomb. Of um, course. What's, oh, but that, what I bombed on before, I'd use it now. Now it works. Exactly. That leads, it works now. That leads me to this one, Leslie. Again, you guys are very similar. Um, I'm addicted to perfection. Problem with my life is I was also addicted to chaos. Perfect chaos. I'm like, wow, that's almost I profound. Alive. I mean, Leslie does have a perfectionist mentality. I'm not sure if she'll admit to the well, chaos life, part. Listen. Listen, this, I, this I is, think it's chaos, but it's it's really music to me. It's not no, chaos. No, it's organized chaos. It's organized chaos. Yeah, exactly. It it's organized chaos. Exactly. If we, were, if, exactly. We were, if we were dealing with chaos, we wouldn't be organized. We And we wouldn't That's have what this. chaos is. We or, wouldn't have all this shit. It's that very much organized chaos. I always call it organized entertaining chaos. If that's all we are, entertaining. We, we got, listen, you know? even when we're mad, we're entertaining. Man, we're, we're big hands. Brian we said all the say. time. He was like, "I'll be trying to take you serious when you curse me out, but bitch, I'll be wanting to laugh like a motherfucker because <laughs> you are hilarious." Like, it's just like it's just we that's got what the we bug. Are. We got the that's bug. That's what we is. We got the bug. We got it. You know, we got it. Yeah, got, got the it. bug. I like that saying. What's the next one? I like it. You got some you good like sayings it? there, Mike. 
Oh, he's got some great ones. Some, some my power is discombobulating, devastating. I could feel his muscle tissues collapse under my force. It's ludicrous, ludicrous that these mortals even attempt to enter my realm. I'm like, you say oh shit like God. that. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. Uh, I don't need to box this guy. I'm going home. I <laughs> want to take. I'm taking that one. It's ludicrous for these idiots to even enter my fucking, fucking realm. realm. I mean, you should it's, say that. That should be on a fucking t-shirt. I want to do that. That is so. When I play like Pictionary so with my good. wife or Listen, something. Um, <laughs> I just um, <laughs> I just took this box and things. It's just my ego. I'm thinking I'm this. I'm intergalactic juggernaut. I'm this, and I'm now I'm looking in the dictionary if I could define the way that describe me. <laughs> <laughs> Discombobulating, devastating is what you came up with. That's I good. Love, yeah. I love discombobulating, devastating is what you came up with. That is fucking awesome. Oh, I love God. that one. That one is like, it's ludicrous for these idiots to even think they can enter my realm. fucking realm. No, that the, is so good. Not even idiots, they're mortals. Mortals. They're, oh, the these mortals. Against oh, the God. these motherfucking mortals. You, you, you know, because I always call people civilians. I be like, these fucking civilians. He's yeah, Mike, civilians. is it true? Oh so you're God. facing the you you go into the middle of the ring, you're facing this guy. Could you tell the energy off of that that when you like they really believed it, like they're facing a god, like not a mortal, I, and I they would, would just, fall. Yes, they were done. Yes, yes. I listen. I don't want to mention it. I've, I've missed some guys, and they act like I knocked them out. Really? <laughs> yeah. When you get to the middle of the ring, you go, okay, I know I'm about to knock this dude out. But I didn't even hit them. They fell out. Yeah, like I Severis or something like that. There's a couple guys that. <laughs> Are you serious? He said they just fainted. No, he said they just fainted. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, there my couple. God. What are you? Hey, 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 are you him. serious? Hey, my head, no God. My kids. <laughs> what do you do when that happens? Huh? What do you do when that happens? Do you just laugh or you just go? I'm All very right. grateful it's over. Wait, but are you. Uh, you just trained for six months, so you're like, oh, God, please. No, well, listen. I was told the harder you train, the luckier you are. Mm. I was just lucky that my energy consumed his energy. Wow. Mm. That's, that's, the, that's the end of our show. Thank you for listening to The Fuckery. Just remember, any photos or links in this episode will be posted to at Fuckery, at Fuckery Podcast at Instagram. That's spelled F-C-K-R-Y podcast on all platforms. Send us your listener questions to fuckerypodcast at gmail.com, F-C-K-R-Y podcast at gmail.com. Letters and voice memos are welcome. If you want to follow me, I'm at Lenny Marcus NYC on all platforms. Follow Leslie at LesDog. That's L-E-S-D-O-G with three G's on Twitter, four G's on Instagram, and five G's on TikTok. Why, Leslie? Because I'm a motherfucking G, bitch. <laughs> the fuck with <laughs> Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus was created by and stars Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. The show is produced by Judith Cargbo. Filling in for our audio engineer, Jordan Duffy, is Abby Aguilar in Los Angeles. Abby! 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 And she's like, bitch, you just learned my name, bitch. You just learned my fucking name. Because I want to call her Maddie so bad. Uh, New York City audio engineer and board operator is Dan Spaventa. Our production coordinator Spaventa. is also Abby Aguilar. Music for this show is done by Marina Pais. This is an Earwolf production. Cause the wolf, the wolf, the wolf has ears.